This is episode 67 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. Coffee? Check. Music? Check. Fun and encouragement? Check and check. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. I can't wait. I can't wait for our subject today on the Rise Up podcast. Also, I can't wait to be an adult. This is going to be fun someday. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get accused of not being quite there. but Get to grow up. Yeah, yeah when are you going to grow up? I don't know. What are you going to do when you grow up? I don't know. But that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> Uh, the most fun things or the what do you enjoy most? What do you find most satisfying about being an adult? I think it's funny the things that you say when you're properly a kid. Like, well, when I grow up, I'm going to eat whatever I want. It's like, yeah, but when you grow up, you have to pay for it. When you eat whatever you want. You got to pay for those things. Then you say, I'm going to go to sleep whenever I want when I grow up. Yeah. And you also have to pay for that, too. It's like, oh, wow. When you're a kid, you don't feel when you miss your bedtime but oh wow you blow past that as an adult you're like why am i yawning so much today oh that's right i was exercising that adult privilege of going to bed whenever i wanted to mm. those aren't the favorite things about i guess we'll say being an adult eating whatever one wants and going to sleep whenever one wants i'd have to say maybe something that i thought as a kid i thought it was more of a thing that kids do and i didn't really realize it was something that adults do in a healthy way and I think it's the friendships. I thought of friends, if you you know, friends, kids have friends. They go to playground with friends. You you play games with your friends. You have your friends over to do video games and stuff like that. That's what friends do when you're a kid. I didn't really picture having fun, having relationships where you, you share deep personal things with other people as an adult. I don't know. I just pictured friendships. Do you do that still when you're an adult? Well, yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's good. And Sadly, there are a lot of times where you can be in a place in life where it's really hard to find friends. And that's that's difficult because there's not always a lot of control one has over that. But friendships and realizing, yeah, that's not just like a playground schoolyard thing. Friendships, close relationships are something God wants to bless us through all throughout our lives, not just as kids. I've found and continue to find and pray by God's grace that I will always be blessed by that, the the richness that he has to to build into my life, to encourage me, for me to be able to encourage other people through the friendships that you get to enjoy. And yeah, still have fun mm -hmm. with other people when you're an adult, friends still. For me, the permission to say no is a big part oh, of wow, being yeah. an adult. And maybe not from like the instant you become an adult, but definitely as I have aged, matured, I have felt more entitlement, maybe more confidence to say no. And you can say no without being rude. You know, if somebody invites you to something that you'd rather not go to because you know it's going to tire you out and make you less effective for something else you have planned, you can say, oh, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it, but I hope you guys have a really good time. You know, you don't have to be rude yeah. about, no, I don't have time for you. And it's not no based out of selfishness, you know, to say, oh, I'm above going to this thing or that thing. But I was really convicted um, by the Lisa Turkers book called The Best Yes. And it was this idea that when you say yes to one thing, you're really saying no to something else. And so you have to decide, like, what is the best thing to do with your time? And maybe the best thing is staying home for the night, being home with your family, taking time to clean your house or taking time to read a book or taking time to recharge yourself. This is a quote from uh, that book. The decisions you make today matter. Every decision points your life in the direction you're about to travel. No decision is an isolated choice. It's a chain of events. If you choose wisely, your future will reflect that. But if you don't choose wisely, the decisions you make now will take you to places that you don't want to be later. And so I think as I've gotten more adulty, <laughs> I realized that what I do today affects what I do tomorrow. And a packed schedule does not lead to a better me in the future. Mm -hmm. And so I've just learned 
to say, oh, unfortunately, I can't make it. Now, the flip side of that is that when I see all the fun stuff that people are doing on Facebook (laughs) after I've said no to something, I have to say to myself, my little envious part of me that'll pop up, you chose not to be a part of that because you chose to do this thing instead that was better for you. And sometimes it's not more fun, that other thing, but it's the thing that's going to make you more like Christ in the future. And so being able to say no, it's a pretty grown-up thing, I Hmm. think. I think uh, the older I get, and it started back when I became whatever the adult age is, that's different for everybody, I suppose, because with being an adult comes responsibility. And uh, as you become an adult, you weren't thankful at the time, but you realize you're thankful for what your parents did. At least that's that's how it is in in my case. It's like, wow, as a kid, I didn't realize they did that. Things you took for granted uh, as a kid. And in my case, it's like, wow, okay, I started appreciating my parents uh, even more as I got to uh, adulthood. And I hope that becomes full circle because one of the the joys of being an adult for me uh, is having two kids. And at each age appropriate time, whether it be from the beginning and that that word responsibility, uh, responsibility of I don't know, be changing diapers, it to be whatever. And I remember saying at that point, it's like, well, I can't wait till I can actually talk to my child and uh, we can actually have conversations. And of course that happened. And then can't wait till they can, you know, think things through and come up with a, maybe even a better solution than I had. And that comes quicker than you think. And, and then just uh, having those relationships that continue at each age appropriate moment. But as an adult and being a parent, and I kind of put those two, at least for me, uh, in, in the same boat, that I just really enjoy uh, being an adult and the parenting part of it. And I'm not saying it's a, not always the good stuff. Um, th- there was just a time recently where in one single day, talked to both kids, and they're now both adults and married, that one was going through one of the best days of their life, and the other was going through one of the worst days that they've had. And not that you enjoy the worst part. I mean, you enjoy celebrating. But I just remember get, getting off the phone and talking to my wife, and I was like, you know, it just... It's fun seeing fun. It's enjoyable. It's fulfilling Mm. is probably the better word uh, to just be able to be there. And they want to talk to you and you go through these things with them. So um, I enjoy that being an adult, the good, the bad, all the things that go into that, just being able to uh, mentor them. And and I hope they come back and they have already, like what I said in the beginning, it's like, oh, I appreciate my parents more now. And they're getting to that stage where they understand. Therese, you use the word adulty, and I'm sure we <laughs> they they use the word every time they come up to something, it's like, oh, this adulting thing is a little bit more than I thought <laughs> right. it was gonna be. Right. Oh, I hate adulting, <laughs> you know, when it, paying the bills, doing all those other right. things. So uh just the different stages of being an adult and what that means. And and again, for me, it's just uh being able to relationships and you talked about friendships, Tim, but that relationships with uh my, our our kids and the family together is the fun part, is my favorite part of being an adult. I got an envelope yesterday, something titled AARP. That just seems entirely wrong. <laughs> That's a scam. Why? That's a scam, no. (laughs) If you're looking for fun, hope, and encouragement, you've come to the right place. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. It's like the leftover that never goes away. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just it was never special in our house growing up. Quiche, it's just... It's there. Uh-huh. Like quiche, it's not. It's certainly not royalty you're, food. You're so fancy that quiche is just regular. <laughs> no, right? it's, just like, it's like yeah, I see. it's like I scrambled see. eggs and crust is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Around. I mean, when you come down to it, yeah, it's, kind of, yeah. it's just like there it is. It's quiche, but no, I guess it's. I guess it's the food of royalty. Coronation quiche is going around the internet this week. Really? That's a big yes. thing, yeah, for, for King Charles or to be, you know, with his coronation. Coronation quiche is the food to eat when you're celebrating that, I guess. I'm wondering, like, what's the story here? Is it his, like, favorite? Is it some special history? What is it? Like, what's the thing behind coronation quiche? I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm going to have to look it up. I will tell you this will be the one time. I want a full life story background to the recipe when I read it. This is the one time I want to know. Is this like, forget how many eggs I need. When was the first time Charles right. tried quiche? Why does it remind him of summers in the Royal Gardens? I want the full backstory this time. Reminding you that God is in charge today and every day. 
It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. You know, sometimes you learn by doing. I'm sure you've seen that with a lot of things in your life. Lately, Mm. God has been teaching me through doing. And what have I been doing? Well, just trying to be available. Yesterday, as I left church, I knew I shouldn't go to the grocery store logically because Sundays after church, the grocery store is usually the craziest it is the whole week. There were a couple things on our list, things that could have waited another day, but there was like this burning desire to go to the grocery store. Hmm. And so I called my husband and I said, you know what? I'm going to run to the grocery store. I know. I don't even know why because it's going to be insane, but but that's where I'm going to go. And then I'm, I'm coming home. So I pull in. And I think, is that is that Joe? We have this sweet lady who lives just around the corner from us, hmm. and she's older. And I was like, I think that's Joe. And it oh. was starting to rain a little bit, so I pull up next to her as she's walking in the parking lot, and I rolled down the window, and I said, Josephine, what are you doing out in the rain? <sighs> and she looked at me, and this woman who's normally full of so much joy burst into tears. And I said, what happened? What happened? What happened? And she oh. said, I lost my wallet. I said, oh, I've had that happen. What a terrible, terrible feeling. When did you when did you last have it? I came to the store on Friday and I haven't seen it since. Oh. I said, has has anybody used any of your cards? No. I said, it's in your car. Huh. And she said, No, I looked in my car. My niece helped me look at my car. And I it was just like a Holy Spirit thing. I huh. said, Joe. It is in your car. Where is your car? And she said, it's parked right up there. I said, we're going to go look in your car. And she said, I've looked in my car. I've looked in my car. We opened the doors. I said, what color is it? And she said, red, and it's right here. Oh, yes. And she said, (laughs) hallelujah. She goes, I prayed all morning in church that I would find it. And she goes, it's you. It's you. And I said, no, Mm. it is not me. Because, like, I didn't even want to come to this store today. (laughs) And the Holy Spirit was like, you are going to go to that store. Mm. And when you said you lost it, and I don't know where it is, and the Holy Spirit was like, it's in the car. And I said, it is not me. Hmm. It is the Lord. So I want to encourage you today when you're feeling like that, that rushing feeling, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. Stop. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. That's in Psalm 37. Okay. Hmm. And when you firmly believe that, when you let God order your steps, he's going to let you be a part of his plan for the day. There is no need to rush. There is no need to worry. Let him order your steps. Feel free to stick around a while. We love it when you're here. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. There's something you find out later is, uh, well, I mean, even when you did it, you knew it wasn't exactly right, but you didn't know how wrong it was Mm -hmm. until you read about uh, a list of things that grocery store workers uh, dislike the most. Oh, and at I the do? very top of the list, I'm like, uh oh. What have I done? I've done this. Before. I don't do it a lot, but I have done this, and I admit, and uh, I will now likely not do it ever again. Um, have you ever been like going down the aisle and you pick out something, uh, let's say a jar of spaghetti sauce? All right. So now yeah. you're going down, and then you're now seven aisles over because you've got that spaghetti sauce later. And then, then you get a text from maybe, you know, your wife and says, Oh, by the way, we don't need the spaghetti sauce anymore. And so I'm in the cereal aisle, and I'm like, Well, that's a long way over there. It looks good next to these Cheerios. <laughs> Somebody's having marinara. Yeah! Oh. Oh, no, you're not supposed to do that, apparently. You're not supposed to do that. And as somebody who worked in the grocery store mm-hmm. during the pandemic, just for fun, because I thought it would be fun to meet new people, uh, so yeah. I did. Yeah. No, don't do that. Uh, uh, that yeah. the, that's yeah. that's bad. That's so it's so challenging, especially yeah. if it's something perishable, right, yeah. and it gets left somewhere. Oh, yeah, and right. and and I know you make choices. I've often seen things <laughs> like a bag of carrots next to the little Debbie display. <laughs> I understand. Right. You looked and you were like, right. that Swiss rolls <laughs> way better than carrots. <laughs> Get into a carrot cake, that little Debbie. Right, she could do. She could probably do some really good stuff there. But no, oh, here's what you do. This okay. is what you do with oh, it. Okay? okay, if you Thank change you. your mind, it's fine. We understand people change their minds all the time in the okay. grocery store. Mm-hmm. Take it to the checkout with you, oh, okay. and just say to the checkout person, uh-huh. "I changed my mind about this." Oh, really? Just say, "I changed my mind. I decided I don't want this." Uh-huh. And then they put it aside, and then someone uh-huh. will do what's called reshops, and they uh-huh. fill up a whole cart with things that need to be put back where they uh-huh. go. But when uh-huh. things are in the wrong place. 
you know, people can't find them to buy them. Unless, of course, Mm -hmm. somebody goes to the Cheerio aisle and then they're like, wait, (laughs) lasagna sounds like a good idea for breakfast. (laughs) Thankfully, this spaghetti sauce is already right right here. You're welcome, people. You're welcome. (laughs) I am here for you. I feel better about these little Debbies with the baby carrots to go with them. Yeah. Thanks for making us part of your morning routine. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Look at all this food. You like that cooking channel, huh, Grandma? I smell cinnamon rolls. We're having macaroni tonight. That means garlic fries. Yeah. Tell me what's cooking. Everybody mixing to the beat. Tell me what's cooking. He's a man who knows how to use his noodle. Our oh, chef, oh, Nick oh, Finlayson, oh. with Nick's Picks, You Can Fix It's a Pasta Month. Yes. Yeah, this is spinach and ricotta baked pasta, which almost rhymes. Tim noticed yeah. that. Right. So, yeah, but it's, um, you know, you, you use fresh ingredients. I think it really changed something. Mm-hmm. So you're using fresh mm-hmm. spinach, garlic, you're making your own tomato sauce with fresh basil. You know, and it really kind of elevates the whole thing. You could, you could, you know, take a shortcut, use the canned sauce, oh, um, but yeah, don't do that. It's re- it's a whole bunch of cheese in there. There's ricotta, there's mm-hmm. mozzarella, and there's also parmesan. Cool. So if you have like one of those things, it's like sometimes at home we have like a meatless Monday. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can do something like this, and oh, it's definitely. really hearty and filling and delicious. Yes, it really is delicious. It's like Italy traveled into your mouth and had a party. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> I have a small grandmother stuck in my tooth. Oh, <laughs> man. That's wow. more. so good. Oh, man. I love it. Like, whenever. Wow. That's, I mean, no, no. Who, who else could make spinach taste like a party but a recipe coming from you, Nick? I mean, I love it whenever I see spinach and I'm like, oh, I know it's going to be healthy, but it's going to taste like a party. Like, well, like an entire country of party. Right. Yeah. So it's like so good. Mount yeah. Vesuvius is <laughs> stuck over here. Everywhere. And the whole country right into your mouth. Oh. It really is good. Like every there's so many flavors going on there. You can find the whole country. No, you can just find the whole recipe. Right. At familylife.org yeah. under the radio tab. You'll find Nick's picks you can fix for this amazing ricotta spinach pasta. And it almost rhymes. Like and it said. almost rhymes. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. The, the recipe is up there and it's just for all of everyone. us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the whole country. Oh, yes, everyone. <laughs> we hope the rest of your day is just as much fun as this. You're listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Prayer doesn't change anything. I've tried that before. The one thing I got was disappointed. Faith with cracks instead of filling. If that's what you're feeling, I too have had hopes that didn't come true. When you ask for a miracle, you're expecting to see God move. You might give up on the notion when, instead of divine motion, doubt springs a leak in your boat and fear inside feels like an ocean. I'm saying this for both of us, a fervent prayer availeth much. Pardon the old English. Just think, righteous prayers are what get things done. Prayers for our nation and families. Don't give up because you don't see what God might be doing right now. Who knows what's been won on tired knees? Prayer is less about what I feel and more about the God whose real love for us has already stilled our greatest storm from Calvary's hill. Pray with faith. Pray to availeth. Because the God who hears you set every yes into motion by the one Jesus of Nazareth. I'll admit, it's mysterious. But the word must be serious when it says, ask. After all, look what he already did for us.